All right. Well, thank you, everybody. My name is Nora Bloom, and I'm with Travel Leaders. And thank you all for joining us today for this exciting presentation by Rocky Mountaineer. I'd like to introduce to you Don Elmendorf. She's with Rocky Mountaineer, and she's going to be taking us through some amazing journeys. Uh, please feel free to use the chat feature. If you have any questions that come up along the way, uh, go ahead and type them in the box. And at the end, we'll, I'll, I'll kind of uh, help, help uh, coordinate and facilitate those questions with Don. So I'm going to turn it over to Don now. Thank you so much for joining us and, uh, and welcome. Thanks, Nora. I appreciate it. And thank you again, everybody. I am going to go ahead and, and hide myself as well because I talk with my hands and it gets distracting, I think. So I'll do that. And I'm going to talk about Rocky Mountaineer because that's what we're here for. Um, Rocky Mountaineer for over 30 years, we have taken guests around the world on remarkable journeys through Western Canada. And now we are happy to announce that we are also in the, U the U.S. as well. Um, we offer daylight only train travel. I'll talk about that a little more. We become known for our spacious, our luxurious coaches, our exemplary food, um, our exemplary service, fresh, flavorful food, and, and really engaging hosts. So I'm going to tell you all about that, how it's going to work today. Um, tell you a little bit about a day on board Rocky Mountaineer, what it's like. I'm going to talk about our Canadian routes and then I'll finish with our United States route as well. So very exciting stuff. I love this picture and I love this statement because it is so true. You know, whether you're going on our U.S. route or our Canadian route, you could drive the area and it would be absolutely beautiful. However, seeing Seeing it on board a train just gives you another view of it. And there are sites that I'll be showing you that you cannot even see if you were to drive it um, because they are not accessible by car. So what makes Rocky Mountaineer really unique is three things. First, I love the word day in here because a day on board the train. We are daylight only train travel. One of the biggest misconceptions I get is, well, where do you sleep on the train? You do not. Um, we want to make sure you get a good night's rest. Besides, you're going to arguably two of the prettiest areas of the world, the Canadian Rockies and the Colorado Rockies. You want to see them, right? You don't want to be traveling at night. You certainly don't want to be sleeping through them. So we are daylight only train travel. Uh, we provide assistance with your luggage. We take care of your luggage for you. Actually, it works out really well. Your luggage is in your room waiting for you. Um, before you even get off the train. So uh, just super, super great service. Our world-class cuisine. Uh, you're probably thinking, how good can train food be? Oh, it can be good. <laughs> Trust me. We win award upon award upon award for our food. Uh, we really do have world-class cuisine. What I love about it, it's all locally sourced. So say, for example, in, in Canada, the beef is from Alberta. Uh, the wines are from the Okanaga Wine Valley. In fact, um, here's a picture of part of your crew and you'll notice a chef there. Every single rail car, every rail car on board Rocky Mountaineer has its own kitchen and culinary team. Think about that, that's really important. Your food is not being made eight and 10 cars over and cold by the time you get there. Um, it's made right there. Also, the third thing that makes us unique, besides the daylight only train travel, besides the world-class cuisine are our hosts, where we have commentary on board. You're not gonna get any of this um, with any other tour operator. We're very, very unique in this sense. So we have hosts that will tell you the history of the area. It'll tell you, they'll tell you the sites that you're coming up to, be it Pyramid Falls in Canada or the book cliffs in the United States. They're great animal spotters as well. So. So if anybody on the train spots an animal, they know about it because they carry walkie talkies and they'll yell out, there's a, there's a bear on the right. And then it's really fun because everybody screams and jumps up and runs and takes a picture of the bear. But that's where it becomes a fun social interaction because trust me, once that first bear or mountain lion or bald eagle is spotted, everybody gets into it. It becomes really fun and everybody starts, starts chatting and, and looking for the animals. So in Canada, like I said, I'm going to start with our Canadian product. Uh, we just do Western Canada, basically Vancouver over to the Jasper, Banff, Lake Louise area. In Canada, we have two different classes of service, gold and silver. 
Now, I want you to know that both classes of service are all inclusive when you're on the train. And that means your meals, which is generally breakfast and lunch because you're off the train by dinner time with that daylight only travel we talked about, your meals, your snacks, and your alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages are included no matter which class of service you take. Um, both are great options. They're just a little bit different. Some people like one better than the other. Some people like the other better than the other. So it's just a matter of personal preference, but I'll tell you the differences. The Gold Leaf Rail Car is a two-level rail car where you sit up top and you have the big 180 degree um, view of the Canadian Rockies. You then take a spiral staircase down to dine on the main level. So you're not going to different rail cars to dine. Everything happens in your one rail car. You dine on the main level. You can see here the middle picture, you dine restaurant style, tables of four, two across from each other. And um, you get a choice of six hot entrees at breakfast and lunch on Gold Leaf. Now, if there's any dietary requests, and this is the same for gold or silver, this is the same for US or Canada. If you have any dietary requests, and we can handle almost any dietary request except for kosher, um, please let your travel leaders, travel advisor know as soon as possible. We can handle it if we know ahead of time. If it's a surprise, we may not be able to. So let your travel leaders advisor know. Also on Gold Leaf is the outdoor viewing area. This holds about 20 people if we were all to stand out there. Just really a place to get some fresh air. Uh, if you're an avid photographer, take some great pictures. People just tend to come and go from that. I've been out there 20 minutes by myself. I've been out there with you know a handful of people. Silver Leaf uh, is still considered a domed car. As you can see, uh, the dome goes up about a third of the way and you actually dine at your seat. So your food is plated in the kitchen and uh, plated to your preference and brought right to your seat. And again, it's all inclusive as well. Oh, when you get a choice of two entrees at breakfast and lunch um, for the silver. It's, it's funny, I always joke that the Baileys taste the same in silver leaf as it does in gold leaf, I can tell you that. And then again, always overnighting in wonderful hotels, um, be, the, be them in Canada or the US. So always getting a good night's rest. We have three routes in Canada and it's the three solid lines in this picture. The green dotted line I'll talk about in a little bit, but right now I'm gonna kind of break it down for you. I'm just going to talk rail only, but we do provide packages and that's where that green dotted line comes in. So we provide a variety of packages as well. So you're not just doing the rail because the rail itself is only two or three days but we make a comprehensive package out of it. Our first route is a three-day route to Jasper called Journey Through the Clouds. You can start and end in Vancouver or Jasper. Uh, that's where the train starts and ends. You can go either way. Uh, and then you're gonna overnight in Whistler and Quesnel. If you have not been to Vancouver, it is honestly one of my top three favorite cities in the entire world. It's actually where our headquarters is uh, for Rocky Mountain Air. I always recommend an extra night. Um, a lot of things to do there. Uh, Stanley Park uh, is a huge park in the middle of Vancouver. There's totem poles there. The Capilano suspension bridges, which is the picture at the bottom that looks really terrifying. <laughs> and it's not that bad though, I promise you. And Granville Island. My favorite place in Vancouver is Granville Island. It's like Pike's Market in Seattle on steroids. So. Uh, it's this huge market with a bunch of shops and restaurants. At least have to, uh, make time to have lunch on Granville Island. So you'll get on the train and you're going to head to Whistler and you'll get into Whistler around noon. It's a short day, about four hours on the train. You'll have the rest of the day in the evening free to enjoy this little iconic ski village in British Columbia. You will then uh, the next day, get back on the train and head up towards Quesnel. And here's where you're going to notice a huge topography difference. Um, the reason we call this rainforest a gold rush, you hug the, the coastline of Vancouver, which is technically rainforest. Then you hit in the mountains of Whistler. And when you get towards Quesnel, it's, um, it's very desert-like. It's where the gold rush happened in Canada. You wouldn't even know that you're in Canada overnight in Quesnel, get back on the train, and then hit the beauty of the Canadian Rockies. This is a picture of Mount Robson, which is the highest point in the Canadian Rockies, and you would end your rail journey in Jasper. Again, just talking the rail portion only. 
Journey Through the Clouds is our two-day route to, uh, to Jasper. It overnights in Kamloops. Now, people always ask me, why Kamloops? Why Quinell? Um, it, it's honestly, these are just overnight stops. So we keep the integrity of the daylight only train travel going. But Kamloops is about 100,000 people. I actually really like the town. Every night in the summer, there's a park within walking distance of the hotels and they have live music, which is really cool. The next day you'll get back on the train and head into Jasper and you'll pass sites such as Pyramid Falls. This is one of those sites that I mentioned. You, can, you cannot see it by car. You can only see it on board Rocky Mountaineer. And can't you just picture yourself on board that train with a glass of wine in your hand, looking up and seeing this gorgeous waterfall come down over these cliffs and rocks, just absolutely, absolutely stunning. And then again, ending your rail journey in Jasper. Now, Jasper is um, smaller than I thought it would be. It's only about 4,000 people, but it's, to me, it's very um, pristine, very kind of untouched, very natural. Okay, those were our routes to Jasper. We also have a route that goes over to Lake Louise and Banff called First Passage to the West. Uh, does the same thing, Vancouver to Kamloops first day. And then instead of heading Northeast to Jasper, go straight East over to Lake Louise and Banff. If you're a train or a history buff, this is a great route for you. We go through the spiral tunnels. So back in the early 1900s, it was actually really dangerous and treacherous to travel on this route. It was too steep that they built it too steep so they couldn't control the speed of the train <laughs> makes it a little dangerous so they brought in engineers who literally blasted through the mountains and created what they call spiral tunnels i always joke they're not because they aren't really spiral we're not disney world um they look like a big giant cursive l and what they do is the tracks go up and down at varying degrees thus controlling the speed of the train that's as technical as I can get with you guys on it, but trust me, it is really cool. It's an engineering marvel to this day. We are the only passenger train to run on this route and through the spiral tunnels. And then ending your rail journey in Banff. Um, I love Banff. Always do at least an extra couple nights in Banff as well. The first time I did Rocky Mountaineer, I did one night in Banff. I, we, the train was a little delayed and we didn't get in until about eight o'clock at night. I had an 8 a.m. transfer to the Calgary airport the next day. I was super disappointed. I made that mistake once and I've never made it again. This picture um, depicts what I love about not only Banff, but about the Canadian Rockies. And this is a shot right down Banff Avenue. And doesn't it look like you're just gonna run smack dab into that mountain. You're just gonna walk down the block and hit the mountain. It's like that all over the Canadian Rockies. Uh, they're just very, very majestic is the only word I really can use. Now, um, back in the day when I was doing trade shows all the time, uh, people would come up to me and say, oh my gosh, Rocky Mountaineer, one of the best trips I've ever taken. But I wish I would have had more time on the train or I wish I would have gone both ways on the train. Um, in other words, they wish they would have done a circle journey. And this, if this is going to be one of your bucket list trips and you want to do it the right way, uh, you really are going to want to talk to your travel leaders, travel advisor about doing a circle journey. And what that is, is just taking two routes, just taking one route over to the Canadian Rockies. And instead of flying out of Calgary, work your way up, say, to Jasper and take another route back. Um, to do that right, I would say 12 days minimum. As I mentioned, we offer... Um, a variety of activities to make a, a perfect package for you. This is where that green dotted line comes in, the elusive green dotted line. Um, there's no rail that runs north and south from Jasper down to Calgary. So you'll be doing your touring um, a couple of different ways. You can do it either by motor coach or self-drive. You can rent a car and both are fine. Um, I, I've done both. Um, the motor coach, you learn more, you don't have to worry about anything. So I kind of like it a little better, but the self-drive I did with my sister and it was, it was fun. There's one road, you can't get lost. The Icefields Parkway, impossible to get lost, I promise you. What is there to do in the Canadian Rockies? I could do a whole nother PowerPoint on it, but in the midst of time, I'm just picking my top two. The Ice Explorer that goes out onto Athabasca Glacier 
Um, it's one of the few glaciers that you can access by land, by motorized vehicle. Most of them are by cruise ship. And when you're out there, I want you to think about this. You'll be standing on a glacier that is as thick as the Eiffel Tower is tall. I mean, that's pretty cool, right? And then also the Banff Gondola. Um, love the Banff Gondola because it's an eight minute trip up there. And you don't wanna just get out, take a picture, turn around and come back. There's a boardwalk that goes out about a half a mile. Now you don't have to walk the whole half a mile, but promise me you'll at least go out about 20, 30 steps because every 30 steps you'll get a new view of the Canadian Rockies. It's absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous. We do have promotions. We do have some promotions for 2021 as well. Um, um, but 2022 right now is our best promotion. And if you book a qualifying package of eight days or more, you will get two free hotel nights, one private airport transfer, and one dinner. Remember those hotel nights? Or remember those extra nights I said you had to have in Vancouver because it's just such a great city? They can be compliments of Rocky Mountaineer. So I really would, um, I really suggest you do this. If you want to go in 2021, because we do offer the best promo to those who book the earliest, uh, this is your best promo for 2022. If you want to go in 2021, it's one free hotel night, a transfer, and a dinner. Um, I'm going to talk about the risk-free deposits uh, towards the end, because it's going to be the same for the U.S. as it is in Canada. So new for 2021. I am so very proud to be announcing um, our newest rail route traveling to from Denver to Moab over two unforgettable days featuring the awe-inspiring sites of the Colorado Rockies and of course the remarkable desert rock formations of Moab, Utah. This originally was uh, slated to be 40 departures over 10 weeks. We are going to start operating August 15th. Um, and we were only going to go for 10 weeks. Because it is so, so popular right now, we have extended it into November 18th. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later. So we are bringing our Silverleaf rail cars down. Now, you might be saying, well, Dawn, wait a minute, you have two classes of service in Canada. Why are you just bringing Silverleaf down to the US? And the answer is very simple. The tunnels and some of the tunnels in the US are too small for our bi level rail cars. So we do, we can only bring our Silverleaf rail cars down. But just to give you an idea of the inside a little bit better, because those pictures I showed you were kind of small. Um, Here's a great picture of the Silverleaf rail car. You can see you're right down by nature. So everything is right there, big wide windows. Uh, the dome goes up about a third of the way. You know, some people like gold leaf better because you're sitting up top and you get an overview. Some people like silver leaf better because you're right down there in nature. When those animals are right down by the train tracks looking for food, um, they're right there. And then this is a better picture of how you dine at your seat. So your tray table comes down. We do the whole crystal linen china. And as I mentioned, you get a choice of two entrees. The food in the US will still be locally sourced and it's still going to be all inclusive. So uh, your drinks and your snacks and everything will be included. Um, we're gonna have a bit of a Southwestern flair to the food from what I hear. Uh, you can further enhance your onboard experience with our Silverleaf Plus. Now this includes all the benefits of our exceptional Silverleaf service plus exclusive access to a newly renovated lounge car. Really, it's just giving you um, some, some more room, you know, to kind of move around in from, from the Silverleaf rail car to the lounge car. We are going to have a mixologist on board and probably some more snacks and appetizers. Um, so we are only going to be bringing one, maybe two, because this has been kind of popular, one, maybe two lounge cars down. So it is limited as far as space. Uh, you know, in order to add a new route, it needed to be in a really special location with many of the same features of Western Canada that we had. The iconic, um, the iconic destinations, the incredible scenery, the all daylight multi-day journeys that really are best experienced by train. 
And as I mentioned, our new route uh, connects the two compelling destinations of Denver, Colorado, and to Moab, Utah, really showcasing the best that the Southwest United States has to offer. So again, this is our route, the solid line. You'll overnight in Glenwood Springs. We're gonna talk about those green dotted lines in, in just a bit. Um, the, the train does go both ways, Denver to Moab, Moab to Denver. It's the same scenery. Timing is a little bit different on one of the days. When I get to that, I'll let you know what the difference, the difference is. Uh, so Denver, um, if you were on a little earlier, you heard me saying that I have a couple nephews that live in Denver and it's just an amazing city. I love this city. I've gotten to know it quite well. And what I love about it is that it is a bustling city, you know, with culture and diversity but it still gives a nod to the old West era. So really, really cool. Lots of neat things to do there. The Denver Art Museum is a great place to go. Um, if you're into art, if you're into museums, and if you're not into museums, there's interactive exhibits. I'm not a big museum person, but I do like this because of the interactive exhibits. They're really pretty darn cool. The Larimer Square is the oldest part of Denver. It's where all the Victorian era buildings are. Now, Denver is a super easy city to get around. It's actually been ranked the fourth most walkable city in the United States. Um, and I can attest to the fact it's really easy to get around. There is a 16th Street shuttle that goes right down 16th Street, as you can figure that one out. And it does stop every block. So super easy to get around Denver. If you're a craft brew fan, you know that Denver is home to a lot of amazing breweries. I recommend hitting the Lodo District, L-O-D-O, -O, short for Lower Downtown District. Um, there you can find well over 100 craft breweries and sample some of Denver's finest. So you've experienced time in Denver, hopefully, and now we're gonna get on the train. And we are gonna go from Denver to Glenwood Springs. Today's kind of canyon day. We're gonna go through a lot of canyons, which is really, really cool. We're gonna leave Denver around 9 a.m. and we're gonna get into Glenwood Springs around 5 p.m. I'm not gonna go through every site that you're gonna see, um, but I'll kind of hit the highlights, uh, some of the highlights. The Big Ten Curve, and it coined as an engineering marvel and it was built in the early 1900s. Um, we at Rocky Mountaineer love our engineering marvels and I'll be darned, they found one in the United States as well as the spiral tunnels in Canada. This slowly gains elevation uh, before reaching the continental divide. Um, the Gross Reservoir Dam has a sur surface area of over 440 acres, which is pretty darn cool. The Moffat Tunnel. Here's a reason we can't bring our two level rail cars down to the United States. Moffat Tunnel is about six miles long, a little bit over, and it was built in the late 1920s and it connects the Denver area to Utah by tunneling under the Continental Divide, which is pretty cool. Gore Canyon, another one of those sites that you cannot, it's not accessible by car, so you can only see it on board Rocky Mountaineer or I take that back. If you're a class five whitewater rafter, you can see it as well. So I'm pretty darn adventurous, but I am not class five adventurous. I am going to enjoy the Gore Canyon with a cocktail in my hand and <laughs> sitting on board, nice dry Rocky Mountaineer. We'll be getting into Glenwood Springs, as I mentioned, around 5 p.m. So your whole day is not getting on and off the train. You're on the train all day, just enjoying the scenery hearing the history, listening to stories, having some wonderful food, um, and just relaxing. I mean, your whole job during the train ride is just to relax and soak in the scenery. When we get to Glenwood Springs, this is a resort town known for its hot springs, um, but there's the Seventh Street, and I've actually been to Glenwood Springs, and it's pretty cool. It kind of has a street fair feel to it. Um, musicians will start playing, and markets pop up. But so go to the Seventh Street area. It's where all the shops and the restaurants are, the little boutiques, kind of known as Restaurant Row. The next day, you'll be getting up and leaving Glenwood Springs bright and early at 7 a.m., making the 194 mile journey to Moab, getting into Moab around noon. Now, if you're quick at math and you just did the math, you, you may be questioning the timing on that. Well, remember, 
Rocky Mountaineer, we're a leisurely train ride. We are not a bullet train through Japan. This is a nice leisurely train ride. Uh, we joke at Rocky Mountaineer that we travel at Kodak speed because we only travel about 30, 35 miles an hour max, okay? This is where the difference comes in if you're going Denver to Moab, Moab to Denver. So as I mentioned, if you're going Denver to Moab, we'll leave Glenwood at seven, get into Moab at noon. If you're going the opposite way, if you're going Moab to Denver, you're gonna see the same amazing scenery. It's just your timing on this day will be a little bit different. You will leave Moab at 2 p.m., have a wonderful dinner on board Rocky Mountaineer, which is really cool, and get into Glenwood Springs around 7 p.m. And then the next day would be the same, the nine to five. So that's the only difference is just the timings. Sites you'll be seeing this day is Parachute Creek, a 15 mile tributary of the Colorado River. The Ruby Canyon, you can guess where it got its name. Um, this is another one of those sites uh, that is not accessible by car, only on board Rocky Mountaineer. The LaSalle Mountains and uh, Mount Peel, the name dates back to the old Spanish times of Sierra LaSalle, which means salt mountains. And they were the prominent landmark on the old Spanish trail. And another site, this one I think is really cool, is the book cliffs. They actually look like books stacked on a shelf. So that's thus they call them uh, the book cliffs because of their unusual rock formation. Uh, this is a picture of Mount Garfield. Mount Garfield overlooks the Grand Valley. Uh, Grand Valley is rich with orchards and vineyards. And a little known fact is that in the last decade, the winemaking industry has actually taken off uh, in that area. Now it's no Napa, don't get me wrong. But hey, next 10, 20 years, you never know. And finally, like I said, arriving into Moab, Utah. Now, Moab is the closest town to a lot of the national parks, Arches, Canyonlands, Dead Horse State Park. So it is a touristy town, even though it is less than 5,000 people. But because it's a touristy town, it has a lot of shops and restaurants and hotels and galleries. So you definitely want to take time to walk around Moab a little bit. We have several packages on board Rocky Mountaineer. So you can do anything from the rail only to just one night in Denver, one night in Glenwood Springs, one night in Moab and do your own thing. Or we have put together again, packages just like we have in, the, in, the, uh, in Canada. And this time you have a choice of going up to Salt Lake City or to Las Vegas. So we have about 12 packages to choose from. You can, by the way, we have now, because it's been so popular. I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna go back a couple slides here. Oh, I forgot it was that many slides. Um, you can go both ways on the train. We have had people inquire about that. And so now we do have kind of what we call a circle journey, although it's kind of out and back, uh, going both ways on the train, spending time in Moab and they wanna be on Rocky Mountaineer again. So they're heading back to Denver. So continuing on, um, if we go to uh, Salt Lake or Vegas, uh, we'll be doing this. You can do it by motor coach. And these are like guided vacations. So you will have a travel director and a guide with you. Um, I, we have about 12 packages. I picked my favorite and I picked one of the most popular ones. The reason I like this one is because it, it does four of the mighty five national parks. So you would do Rocky Mountaineer, spend two nights in Moab, from there, you're going to go to Monument Valley, Dead Horse, Arches, Canyonlands, then head down to Lake Powell, spend the night there, go see the north rim of the Grand Canyon. Most people see the south, you'll see the north, and then head up to Bryce, Zion, and then uh, fly out of Vegas. Again, you can also do it by self-drive, and this is going to be more if you want to spend more time in the national parks, you want to hike through Arches or through Canyonlands. This time I picked one that goes to Salt Lake, but of course you can go to Vegas as well. In this scenario, you would do the train, uh, spend two nights in Moab, jet out at your own leisure, hike as long as you want, as little as you want, whatever you wanna do, and then head up to Salt Lake. The drive from Moab to Salt Lake, if you were to drive it straight through is four hours. Moab to Vegas is six and a half. I mean, you're not going to do the, the whole thing at once. There's so many things to see along the way, but just to give you an idea of distance. So I talked about promotions in Canada. Um, promotions in the U.S., really, for the most part, it's, it's just a low introductory price. We have rock bottomed our price 
Uh, for the US for 2021, it's obviously worked because it's a, uh, like I said, we've extended the, the, um, the season. However, and this is hot off the press. I just found out about this literally three hours ago. Um, we are offering a promotion. Um, mem remember how I said our first part of the season was August through mid-October, and then we extended it. If you go, if you travel on Rocky Mountaineer in the U.S. from October 24th to November 18th, if you book one of those dates that we have added on, we are going to take $150 off per person. So if you're thinking of going in October, wait till October 24th. Now, this is only good for the next 30 days, okay? It just came out. Actually, you can't even book it uh, with travel leaders today. You have to wait till tomorrow. You can talk to your travel leaders, travel advisor today, but they uh, will have to wait till tomorrow to book it. So it's that new. It's that new. So if you travel October 24th through November 18th on our U.S. route, you can take $150 off per person. I do want to talk about um, our new flex terms because peace of mind is so important right now. I mean, gosh, we all want peace of mind, right? In many things in our life, uh, but I can only give it to you on board Rocky Mountaineer. So for any new 2021 booking, this is good for the US, this is good for Canada. Um, a 20% deposit will be due at the time of booking. That is normally non-refundable. In normal times, it is non-refundable. However, Right now, we are offering um, a refundable deposit until 30 days prior to departure when your final payment is due. So really no risk to you. We're also offering two free date changes if you want to change dates. For 2022 bookings, um, we are offering 20% at the time of booking, same thing. And then it's refundable until December 3rd, 2021. So um, 2021 bookings, refund the deposits refundable until 30 days prior. 2022 bookings, refundable until December 3rd. Um, finally, please, please, please work with your travel leaders, travel advisor. Um, these guys are just great. I just, I just love them. I really do. I've worked with them for quite some time now, and they are the professionals. What I love about them is they're going to tell you where you definitely want to spend the money, but they're also going to tell you where you can save some money. So listen to their advice and um, please work with them. They, they are great. So thank you so much. I am going to mention just because it's kind of, you know, always the dark horse of the elephant in the room. I'm going to mention um, some COVID protocols or, or Nora, do you want me to mention them or do we want to, is there some questions on it? Do we want to how do you we want to do handle? have some questions, but I would like to hear what you have to say about your safety protocols. Sure, sure. And of course, I'm qualifying this because I know it's being recorded and it's being sent out on the internet. So I'm qualifying this by saying, as of today, because you guys know this, we are, we're so, you know, we're, this is ever changing, right? It's just ever changing. But one thing I can tell you, we have a filtration system that captures 99.9% .9 of the particles in the air. We are going to electrostatic spray our rail coaches and everything I'm talking about is in the US and Canada. Every night we're gonna electrostatic spray our rail coaches, little things that you might not think of. Um, normally we have crystal, um, condiment, you know, like salt and pepper shakers, those are going to now be more individualized. So there's not a lot of touching everything back and forth. Our hosts of our train crew will wear masks the entire time while you're on the train. Um, little things like we probably aren't going to bring the cart down for the beverages. Oh, trust me, you're going to get the same number of beverages that you want. You're, it's all inclusive. It's just they're going to bring it down to you individually versus having um, the, the cart go down the middle of the aisle so it's less time um, that somebody's you know right by you. And then as far as guests um, with masks, it's really going to depend on both CDC guidelines and Canadian government guidelines. Uh, we probably will require as of now, we're planning on requiring masks being used when you're up and about on the train. So in Canada, when you're going from the upstairs level down to the downstairs level for the washroom or for the um, meals or to the outside viewing area. In the US, if you're getting up and you're walking to the lounge car, you're walking to the washroom area, 
um, then we'll probably be requiring the masks. Um, we may ask that you put them on when you're not eating and drinking, but I chuckle at that because you're always eating and drinking on board Rocky Mountaineer. It's, there's always either a glass of water, a glass of wine, a coffee, a tea in your hand. There's always snacks that come around. Uh, so hopefully that, that helps. But the main thing is to know we are going to follow any guidelines that governments put out. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Don. There are some questions. So let's go over those really quickly. Do you know in Glenwood Springs, if you arrive after 5 p.m., can you still use the hot springs? Great question, and yes, you can. You absolutely can. I believe, and don't quote me on the price, but I believe if I remember right, it was about $25. So you don't have to be staying at like the Glenwood Springs Resort um, to use them. You can stay wherever uh, and then use them as well. That one and the Iron Mountain. So yes, you will have time to use the hot springs. If you're going westbound, if you're if you're going eastbound and we get in at 7 p.m., I'm not quite certain when they close. Um, my guess is they probably close around nine. And remember, you're already gonna have dinner on board Rocky Mountaineer, but I don't wanna officially make a comment on that. I do, I need to find that one out. Good question. Okay. All right, thank you. So tell me which hotels are included on any of these routes? All your hotels will be included. So when they book a package with travel leaders, we're gonna quote everything that's included. We are going to um, include all of the hotels. We are going to include all of the sightseeing that will be in the itinerary and any, of course it's all inclusive when you're on the, tr the train, but some of the packages have additional meals as well. So everything that you see in your quote will be included your hotels your sightseeing everything except um the only thing would be gratuities the gratuities will not be included okay so gratuities and then when you are in a hotel you might have some dinner expense there correct yeah yeah most places you'll have some somewhere including it and some you some it really just depends on the area uh -huh. like in glenwood springs we are not including it um, the reason we don't include it uh, that night is because number one, most people are too full from the train um, to even think about dinner. They just want a little light appetizer. And number two, there's too many cute restaurants in that area to do it. So depending on what kind of restaurants are in the area and um, and where we're at, sure. you know, we may or may not include it. Good. And there's another question. So if if we were to go in, say, October or November between mm -hmm. Denver and Moab, you know, what kind of concerns would the snow and the weather have for you to see, you know, the, the arches and other parks? Um, you know, we're planning, we've, we've checked that and we've checked that, of course, there's always freak snowstorms, right? Denver just had one in, in last week or this, was it this week? I don't even keep track of my days anymore. But of course, Denver just have one. Usually they do not have it. Um, obviously, we're not concerned. We feel safe that if they go November 18th, you know, by no, the end of November or mid-November, that we should be pretty, pretty good. Um, and the the arches in that area doesn't get as much snow as, say, Denver that's up in the Mile High area. Sure. Good. Are there any other questions from those attending? Great questions. Really great questions. Yeah. Well, I don't see any more coming in, but uh, you've all received an email from me with the, the link to, to come in. You can respond to that email and I would be happy to put you in touch with your travel advisor and get you answers for any other questions you might have. Um, but I wanna thank you, Dawn, so much for being here and, and uh, talking to our customers. And for all of you attending, thank you for your time this afternoon. Uh, Dawn, do you have anything else that you'd like to say to sign off? Um, no, just again, I want to thank you for attending and I do hope you do Rocky Mountaineer at some point. It is an amazing, amazing trip. I'm so excited about our U.S. route and I cannot wait to get back on the train in Canada as well. So I hope you experience it at some point. It's a really unique vacation and it's unlike any other one you'll do. So thanks again. Thank you, Nora. Yep. Thank you, Don. Thanks, everybody. Have a great afternoon. Bye-bye.